Hey, guys, welcome back. It's time to, we're, we're taking it back. We're taking it back to the noobiest of noob examples here. We have Gravity, who posted a TikTok of someone that purchased a base unlimited Charizard. They didn't know if it was real. The seller was very sketchy. It seemed like a very sketchy transaction of some sort. There's a second video. We're going to watch both the videos. Uh, but first, we're going to get into what you need to know before you buy expensive cards. And now this applies to everyone, whether you're buying something that's $300 like in this example, or you're buying something that's three grand, you need to know what you're looking at. You need to know how much is worth beforehand. So we're going to walk through those steps real quick here. Again, uh, if you're not new, you probably know all this stuff, but maybe it'll just be entertaining at that point. I think this is most important for anyone that's just starting out that needs to learn, hey, how do I, how do I know what I know? How do I know how to know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing here before I spend a bunch of money on something that could potentially be fake? Am I getting ripped off? Who knows? Well, you will after today. Now, first up, uh, let's say we're looking at the Charizard Unlimited base set. And we got to put near mint in here. Base set is maybe the largest pain in the butt in order to find pricing because you got you got different versions of base set. You got first edition. You got shadowless. You got base unlimited. And then you got you, you, there's fourth print as well. The 1999 2000 date down in the bottom. Um, but then also you got base two and everything else that's going to come in within these searches. So your eBay search is going to be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, even if you know the difference, uh, if you type it in here, you can see here all the first listings. If we sort, we sort by price plus shipping lowest first. Uh, we're going to sort by buy it now. We don't really care if there's auctions going on for the, for the sake of pricing this out. Because guess what? If the auction isn't over, the price doesn't matter. So, so there's that. We scroll through here, uh, you see also the fact that base set has so many damn languages uh, that you're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see German ones in there. You're going to see Italian. You're going to they're going to be all over the place. We're going to have the Japanese base set as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we start getting into the actual base unlimited ones. Ignore the ones with the, uh, the little two there, unless you don't know the difference. Then you need to learn the difference beforehand, because if you're buying a base set two. Charizard, it's going to be less expensive than the Unlimited copy, even though there's probably less Base Set 2 in existence. There's a lot of Base Set Unlimited, uh, even just in English itself. But we find a good, a couple good examples here. You're looking at a CGC 6.5. This is also another one of those examples where you have to look into, is it worth grading? Is it worth just buying a graded? Is it the same price for a raw card as it is for the graded copy of the same grade am i wasting my time and money sending this shit to cgc for them to put it in plastic if you do want it in plastic it might be better to shop around get one in plastic already save yourself the shipping save yourself the grading fees save yourself the risk of your grading company of choice putting mayonnaise all over your card and or pinching it and or wiping their butt with it who knows what they do sometimes i don't know do they know no but you have to be the expert here. Uh, yes, you're more likely to get a card that is authentic if it's in a case and the case is authentic. Then you got to learn how to authenticate the case. Uh, but also if there's like the eBay guarantee, authenticity guarantee, there's also less chance of it being fake. But you don't don't use any of that as a crutch. You need to learn this stuff. You're paying three hundred dollars for a card. You fucking learn that shit beforehand. Sorry, but you have to. You're doing it or you wouldn't be watching this video, right? So if we take a look here, we got some near mints. We got some raw near mints for 250. These are the ones that are available currently. Uh, we got a CGC black, so it won't cost you to send it back in to get your blue label turned into a black label. Or, or next year, maybe they'll have red labels at that point. Who knows? Oh no, they can't have red labels. PSA already has labels with red on them. Okay, so they'll go green. No, they can't go green because. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Enough shitting on grading companies. That's not why we're here. Uh, we are here to take a look at uh, some copies here. We got a little, a little dings and dangs down in the bottom. So uh, not only are you looking for pricing here on what would be like a near mint copy, whatever, uh, you got to look at the types of damage, the amount of damage, when, how much does it cost based on how much damage is on it. Uh, again, this is not one of those examples. I don't, I don't think anyone out there is uh, buying and grading unless they get some kind of sweet, nasty deal. Uh, unless it's going to grade really high. There's not really much of a premium on the graded copies, as you can see there. Usually not the case. Back before the pandemic, yeah, I know this is going to blow people's mind. Uh, you couldn't just grade anything and everything uh, that you kept in your back pocket uh, and expect a premium on it. A lot of stuff is not worth grading because there won't be any premium on it when you do. 
It's not going to increase in value. It's going to be the same as a raw copy. That is why I, a lot of the cards in my collection are cracked copies of 7s, 8s, 9s. 7s if they're super clean, 8s and 9s. If it's the same price as a near mint copy, uh, and that's what's available, I'm probably just going to crack one out, put it in the binder. Uh, so there is there is an important distinction there. Uh, if you're a slabby wabby, chances are when you're new to the hobby, and, and just go through. Take take some time before you go meet up with somebody in a back alley, uh, hanging out, asking them to buy their Pokemon collection. Uh, you're going to want to take a look at this stuff, especially if it's individual cards. Easy enough um, to, to go in there and take a look. So your 6.5 is right in here under the $300 mark. Uh, very cool. Now it is important to take into consideration these people that are making the $300 off this or the $200 off of this, they're paying fees. They got to ship this thing. It's pretty cheap to ship within the U.S., not so much in Canada and such. But uh, uh, assume 10 to 13% uh, off of this price in terms of if somebody sells this in person, uh, that's what they're making. Uh, you're also not paying the tax. So there's uh, if you're if you're just showing up, you're showing up with your wallet, you're paying cash because you're a big G baller 69 that only pays in cash. Uh, was, there's a lot of people this day and age that are like, oh, yeah, but I'm paying in cash. And you're just like, can you not? Can you please not pay in cash? Can you can you just transfer me money? I really don't want to go to the bank as much fun as it is to have dollar bills um, in my pocket. So here you get the Charmander, Charmeleon and Charizard 290. Uh, we'll go through these a little bit quicker here. Uh, I guess here we got like, when you're getting into the PSA 7 territory, uh, we're looking probably up in around more like 350 bucks. Uh, it is make an offer, best offer. They might take 300 for it. Who knows? Um, all right, let's get through here. So here uh, on eBay, for anyone that isn't familiar, and if you're one of the people that had to watch this in order to learn how to purchase cards beforehand, you're going to want to go on eBay. Uh, that same search that we did before for the Charizard Unlimited Base, near mint if you don't put near mint in there man it, it gets even worse you got to be pretty specific there are commands you can put like you can put a minus sign and then put like a two so you don't get base at two and stuff like that uh but we don't have time for that today we're we're going shopping we're going charizard shopping uh with a tiktoker so <laughs> all right so we go down here we hit the sold items you can also specify by region um if you want it like U.S. only, if you want North America, uh, stuff like that. If you're somewhere where there's import fees, you're probably going to want to search by whatever your country is, uh, because then at least you're not paying those import fees, uh, the duty and whatever. Depending on how it's shipped, it can be a nightmare. It can be expensive. Um, but uh, yeah, take that all into consideration. If you're selling on eBay, you're not necessarily competing uh, with people that are in another country because, yes, there's going to be import fees if they send it through like GSP or whatever. There's going to be, there, you're going to get, you're going to get taxed on it. There's going to be duty. There's going to be all kinds of awful, awful things that they're going to do to you. So down here, you click on sold items. It'll automatically also select completed items. Uh, and we can take a look through and see what these cards have sold for. Uh, and you can see if you shop around, you can get a better deal. Trust me, you can. That's usually how it works. Um, you can see here we're closer to the $200 mark on the uh, on the old near mints. Uh, ignore the fact that again we're gonna have expedition base set. We don't want we don't want expedition. So if we wanted to, we could remove the search for expedition or anything like that. Not too many of those popping up, getting in the way. Uh, but uh, you can see here near mint copy maybe 200 bucks, 200 bucks, 200 bucks. Uh, this one. Be careful with the um, the people that want to take a photo uh, that is out of focus, that is across the room. That is on this dirty fabric of some sort. I, I don't know. Is that a booger right there? Gross. Um, but um, again, it looks like it's pretty decent. Uh, but there's no way to tell. Because you got it in a sleeve. You got it in a, a, a magnetic holder. Uh, hopefully they're not shipping in the magnetic holder. But again, that's not on you. You don't really care. Uh, as long as it shows up not damaged, uh, you should be should be happy with whatever they did. I just would not recommend. Because sometimes this will come apart in transit. Uh, the card will get pinched in between. You'll get a nice line across the bottom or top or side or wherever it gets pinched. Uh, and uh, that's no good. Now, we can go on TCG Player. We can take a look. Uh, the old Near Mint Hollow Foil at 300 bucks. Uh, so again, if it's something in this price range, I would probably recommend, if it's vintage in this price range, I'd probably recommend going with eBay over something like this. Now, if it's modern and it's, it's listed as Near Mint, you're probably going to be all right. 
Uh, but uh, again, we got to make sure that we're not looking at the Japanese stuff. Uh, and then we have a bunch for 300 bucks. But you can say here that, that those are brand new sellers. I mean, you'll get your money back if you if you don't get it, if it's if it doesn't show up. Uh, but again, if you don't have photos, I think you're better off just shopping on eBay for something like that. Uh, we have one here for 350 that does have photos if that's what you prefer. Uh, but again, I think the, the better deal to be had is right now on, on eBay. Um, Troll and Toad as well. You can check that. You can search the old base set Charizard Unlimited. Uh, they don't have anything in near mint at the moment, but if they did or they had anything that you do want, you can use code RATTLE5 for 5% off. Good to know, right? Now, if you're looking for fakes, number one easiest way to check if something's fake uh, an easy, an easy, like if it is it confirmed 100% fake arena, uh, you just go on over to Google, you type in Charizard, a base unlimited TCG player. Uh, and when you get this TCG player image, the one behind my head here, uh, that is going to be almost always, uh, the fake that is going to be a counter. This is a counterfeiters wet dream. They are creaming their pants from morning to night because they got a they get a scan of this image they can just print this bad boy on the fake cards so if you see the hollow pattern if you see the stars in the pattern that are on this guy not to mention if the pattern is different or the stars are different in any way uh you can know even to, just by looking at images that it's a fake card almost always they're going to use the tcg players they're kind of tcg player uh images i kind of wish they had a watermark or something on here it would at least kind of make it a little bit more difficult for the counterfeiters to do uh but that's typically what you're looking at, what, to, what you want to check out. Uh, it doesn't matter what the card is. If it has a hollow foil pattern, you, you check out the TCG player. If it matches, uh, you even you either got the one in a billion cards uh, that uh, that this scan was taken with, uh, or you're, you're getting a fake card. So you're almost certainly getting a fake card if the, uh, the, if the stars line up in the same spots. Uh, make sure your Charizard's toes and wings and all that stuff are all centered, are all kind of like the same distance from the border. It's a good one to use. It's a, it's a great example to use as a, the card should look like this. Uh, if there's anything different in the text, if it's kind of like a different or crappier print quality than this, um, if the spacing with the toes and the wings and the stuff like that are in the wrong spot, if the colors are off or different, uh, then you might be looking at a fake as well. So now, that's where we get into look up copies of the real thing. Uh, here we got, we got a Charizard. We just do a Charizard Base Unlimited. You can search for PSA or whatever. Again, the odds of getting a fake card within a case, as long as the case is real, you gotta have to look if you can if you can just go look at the actual like listings or you can even use the like cert lookup for these graded card companies uh look them up and again not a hundred percent they have graded fakes they could grade fakes but chances are if it's real if it's on their actual website uh then there's not really a whole lot to to worry about here so uh if we you can just plug in that seven six seven five seven eight eight three you can probably get better scans of this that's a first edition copy so you don't want to compare that uh with the the unlimited one that you're taking a look at uh, but hold, oh, hold on we jumped the gun a little bit we can grab an unlimited copy here we got a oh, shadowless damn it all right here's a 10 here's a psa 10 um open in a new open a new tab open image a new tab here we go so there we can take a look at it. Uh, you can take a look now. The the hollow pattern is not going to be the same, but you can look at the shapes. Make sure that they're the same size. Make sure that your mouth and tongue they're the 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 correct color. That's usually a pretty good uh, indicator. Make sure that the uh, little foil kind of thing around the Charizard, the outline, is a kind of a bluish tinge. Again, it could depend what the how the light's coming in off of it. Uh, but uh, but that kind of stuff. All the details, all the other stuff. Make sure everything kind of looks the same. The scan is not the greatest, but uh, again, you can go you can go type in the cert. Um, some of them will not be added. They should have been adding photos to their database the whole time, but they didn't. But now the newer stuff they do. Now, I've said this a jillion times on the channel, usually something that I recommend everyone do, because if you're buying cards, let's say you're buying a $300 Charizard here. What is it to you? Why are you gonna buy, what are you, what are you gonna do? You gonna go out and spend $3 or $4 on a, on a jeweler's loop? Yes, you are. Go buy one right now. There's a link in the description. It's an eBay affiliate link. It will support the channel at the same time. I'll get like five cents. But in the process, you're gonna get one of these bad books. 
this is what you want to look at. This is what I like to call the P hole test. Uh, and we call it the P hole test because this is the back of a Pokemon card. Do I have one? Do I have one nearby? It's the back of a Pokemon card inside the P hole. So if we look inside the P hole and it doesn't look like this under magnification, you get a nice like 20x, 30x a jeweler's loop. Uh, and you take a look inside the P hole here. Sometimes you can get it to kind of the rosette pattern, these little dots here uh, to show up without. Uh, without magnification, but just using your phone, your phone camera, if you zoom in uh, and hold it up close enough, you can usually, or, or I guess hold it up close enough and then zoom in on the image. Uh, sometimes you can get the same sort of effect, but for the sake of a few bucks, bring this bad boy with you if you're going, if you're not sure if something's real or fake. Uh, as soon as you see something that differs in this way, it's always been the same ever since base set all the way up until modern times. Uh, this back, this, this dot pattern here, always the same, every English card, always the same. I promise it is always that way. Uh, we can look at one fake example here. Uh, and if you guys didn't notice what's wrong with this bad boy right now, um, these black lines here should be very sharp we, with the pee hole. The pee hole is not good. The black lines should be sharp. Same with the front side of the card. Uh, these are not sharp. This is a scan essentially. Uh, and then they printed it with a, another printer. So sometimes you'll get, I mean, there, there are worse examples than this. Uh, but the fact that these these black lines uh, for the P are not actually solid is it just straight away a dead giveaway. Not to mention the nice little knot pattern that's inside the P hole. Um, wrong. Definitely wrong. Definitely fake. Got it? Good. Now, uh, the same goes with the front of the card. Uh, again, if you don't have the exact card, that's fine. Just use another one that's legitimate, that's as close to the, that same era as possible. Um, your letters. So this is a Dragonite, uh, if you couldn't tell. Uh, we, we have the, the letters, the name of the Pokemon, the text on the card is all a solid black layer. We're not, we're, these are not dots. They're not going to be dotty. They're not going to be weird. Uh, there's not going to be any artifacts around them. Uh, but yeah, that's another, another sure way, another sure way to look at it. Here's a fake one. Here's a fake Dragonite, uh, where you can see that they took a scan of the, uh, the text here. Uh, and then when they printed it. They printed it not as a separate solid black layer. We got this little, the little artifact kind of stuff going around the outside of it because they're just taking the whole card as an image and printing it essentially. Easy peasy, right? So um, the pee hole is a great way to test, but also they could use a real card back and print onto the front. So you need to check both sides. I know you, the jeweler's loop is working double time. You're getting twice as much value for it for the three or four dollars that you spent on it. But, uh, and again, you don't need to use this exact one. There's other ones with lights on them and stuff too, that if you want to buy one of those, this is just, you don't, you don't need the lights. I'm just saying, you don't need anything fancy. This is good enough. Uh, and it's super inexpensive. Would advise 10 out of 10. Uh, same goes with the HP. Uh, so we got real HP here. We got real solid, solid red. Uh, and again, depending on the era, it might not be red, but this, uh, this text here should be nice and solid, nice and crispy clean. Uh, and here is what the, the fake looks like. That's on that same Dragonite, I believe. Or Dra Dragonair? Dragonair. Did I say Dragonite earlier? I meant Dragonair. It's Dragonair. Uh, and this is that same Dragonair fake. Fake one, real one. Fake one, real one. All right, let's watch the video now. Uh, let's uh, let's take a little look-see. This, this should be entertaining. I thought for sure. I mean, it's hard to tell. TikTok, maybe the whole thing was faked. But in general, it, it seemed real sketch. It seemed it seemed very sketch. All right, now that we are prepared, we are prepared for this transaction. Uh, Brian Beyond on TikTok, who is the one that published this, credit to them for recording the transaction, this whole story. Uh, and uh, I guess the reason for this video existing uh, is that's why that's what we were doing before here. This is why we were prepping. This is why we were discussing what you need to look up before you go into a transaction like this one. Uh, we're going to watch the video here. We're going to discuss it a little bit. We're going to watch a second video where he goes to get it authenticated. Uh, and uh, and yeah, it's just it's it's entertaining in the least. My apologies. I don't mean to like hate on uh, on Brian here for uh, I guess the lack of expertise or the lack of knowledge going into this transaction. Uh, again, it's it's TikTok, so whether or not it's like a real interaction, could be fake, could be real. I'm assuming it's real. It seems pretty real. Uh, but uh, it seems like both the buyer and the seller could have benefited greatly by watching this video beforehand. I know it's a hindsight kind of thing, but uh, here we go. I don't know, bro, because usually like the hollow, it has like stars on it. No, it does. 
You just gotta hit it at the right angle and shit. Trust me, I was doing the same thing yesterday. It's so like, what the fuck? Maybe it's just the lighting. Maybe I it put could some be. light on it. Wish I had a magnifier with me yeah, or some shit. Because <laughs> I didn't see anything on it. Nah, it's because the light out yeah. here and shit. I was doing the same thing in my uh, kick it room yesterday. It's just like, wait a minute, how come I'm seeing like the little star things and shit like I used to? Uh, that just threw me off because I didn't see any stars nah, for a yeah, second. I feel you. I've had people ask me, it's like, is it real? Like, um, as opposed to what? <laughs> well, I didn't really have fakes and shit going around back in the day. What can you do for both? Three for this one. Maybe a buck or a buck fifty for that one. Unless they're worth a bit less than shit. You'd probably know more than me at this point. <laughs> so you said a buck? Uh, yeah, if not <laughs> less, I'll take whatever and shit. Uh, I'll do a buck. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And then... A buck. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean a dollar dollar, man. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Uh, 150 or some shit. 150? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, here, hit me up on another day for uh, the Mewtwo uh, one and shit. I'd like to hold on for a little while more. Just, oh, for sure. It's more sentiment and, and shit than anything. Oh, bad, bad, bad. I got this shit with my mom. She actually went with me to the movie and shit back in the day, so. Oh, for sure. Uh, I'll hit you up. All right, cool, uh, cool. For sure, bro. I was going to say, this one's more my mom's than mine, actually. Yeah, all right. Cool. Thank you, man. Thank you. We ain't talking about nowhere, we talking about Woke up full of S5 at the light Yo, honestly, I don't really be buying vintage like that So I'm about to pull up to a card shop right now And get a second pair of eyes to look at this card all right, so uh, clearly I, I don't think either of them Really knew what they were doing, how to price this stuff Unless maybe the seller was, you know, it, it seemed like he was knowledgeable to some extent, but also not at the same time. We had the hilarious interaction with the, the buck slang, where instead of just saying you wanted $100 for it, you, you say a buck and he thinks it's a buck, like a dollar. I, why do we got to, why can't we just use actual dollar dump number values and not uh, buccarinis, <laughs> European dollarinos? Uh, and then we have the Ancient Mew, which uh, apparently wants $100 to $150 for it. Um, I don't know why there wasn't some sort of price negotiated beforehand. You would think that you'd have a pretty good idea. Again, uh, why, are you, why are you wasting your time going to meet up with someone if you don't even know what price you're going to be paying for these? It, 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 uh, outside of the fact that it might be fake. But we see this all the time. I see this all the time. I've seen people drive multiple hours to go meet with somebody to see something if they don't even know if it's real or not when they get there or they don't know what the price, they're, they're, you're going to negotiate the price after you get there. You would think that like beforehand you get a pretty good idea of what they want, what they, or maybe you want to see the condition on some of it, but you have a pretty good idea of what they want beforehand. It seems like neither of them knew what they wanted, but we're just going to hang out, meet up. And, uh, and figure something out on the spot. A little bit weird. Uh, the Ancient Mew, again, nowhere... Okay, the Charizard, the price, pretty spot on. It was a good it was a good deal for the seller, uh, in my opinion, because they don't have to pay fees. It probably went for as much as it would go for on eBay. Um, arguable, could he found... Uh, I mean, from the comfort of your own home, you could probably find a better deal on that same card. They don't seem to either of them know how to prove that it's a real card or know that it, is this real or fake. As we'll see, there's going to be another video that we're going to watch here where he brings it into a card shop. Uh, the card shop, guys, it's like if you're going buying stuff somewhere else, it's kind of slimy, kind of grimy to, to be going into a card shop to have them authenticate your stuff that you're buying outside of the shop. The shop doesn't make any money off of that. If you don't have the intention to sell it to the shop or buy something from the shop while you're there, if you're going to go get their opinion, uh, yes, I know it's an employee. Maybe it's not busy, whatever. Um, at least, you know, buy a couple packs, buy something while you're in there, buy a bag of Cheetos uh, if you need to. Um, you, you got to realize that they're paying uh, to have that establishment there. They're paying the bills. They're paying the lights. They're paying the employee that's talking to you, uh, especially if it's busy in there. They could be helping somebody else that's actually going to purchase something. If you're bringing a card in there, um, it's 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 a it's a little it's a little grimy, especially if you if you have no intention or maybe maybe it's okay if you're like a regular customer or something like that, uh, and you want to get a little a little check in. But it it doesn't seem like that's the case. Uh, so ancient Mew. Uh, easy enough to look up, even just with a quick, quick, quick and dirty TCG player. Uh, look up here. We have 28 bucks uh, for a near mint, near mint copy. It's not a hundred dollar card. Uh, nowhere close. Uh, maybe you get four of them if you're lucky for uh, for a hundred bucks. 
again, it was very widely, very available, very given out to everyone ever that ever went to the movie. Uh, and then also it seems like there was a lot of extra copies on top of that. Even if you want a PSA 9, even if we're going to argue the fact that, oh, it was so crispy clean. Um, you can, we got we got PSA 9s on here for 60 bucks. Probably even get one if you're shopping around. Uh, on eBay, cheaper than that. It's not an expensive card. It's not a rare card. It's a very uh, iconic and sought after card, uh, but there are just uh, many, many copies of it. Many copies that are still sealed. Uh, it even comes with this little, the little Mew insert that uh, they're selling here separately on Troll. But uh, let's watch what happens when he goes into the game store to get it authenticated. It is very difficult to tell if this is real or not based on the footage, just like what he's showing here. It does look, it looks good. It looks good. It looks like it's in pretty decent shape. Let's see how it goes when he brings this bad boy over to the shop. I guess he's driving an Audi, so like maybe he just doesn't care. The 300 bucks doesn't matter that much. But uh, let's uh, let's give it a go. Yo, honestly, I don't really be buying vintage like that. So I'm about to pull up to a card shop right now and get a second pair of eyes to look at this card. What's up, dude? Yo, a card or something? Do you legit check cards? Cause I just bought this right now, bro. I want to make sure it's real. What makes you think it's fake? Just the hollow, bro. Isn't it supposed to like pop out more? It's, I mean, it's, it's legit, bro. It's a hundred percent legit, right? Yeah, that's it. There's nothing that tells me otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're good though, bro. Oh, for sure. How much do you uh, get it for? 300. Probably paid, I'll say that, but that's okay. I mean, it's real. So legit. I see them on eBay for like near mint. The recent sales, like 400. Like 350. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense though. Yeah. Okay, bro. Hey, it's real. All right, bro. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, so. I don't know how long ago this was recorded, even if the video, even if the TikTok was posted recently uh, in pandemic times, it would have been more expensive, surely dropped, surely tanked in value quite a bit. Uh, now that uh, now that people are, are not hard on the Pokemon train, um, but uh, this uh, the slam on the counter, not a big deal. You should have had a play mat out there uh, to put it on. For anyone that doesn't know, if you're handling cards, don't put them on like a, on a tabletop surface, on a glass surface, on anything that's got dirt on it, anything that's rough. You use a play mat so you can also easy, you know, easily pick the card up. Uh, but when you're sliding stuff on a table, you'll often see little scratches across a card. Very common type of damage. Uh, the pricing here where he says like it sold for 360 same day. I don't know if he's including like tax on that and, and shipping and but uh, probably not if we're talking recent times. Uh, again, it's it's hard to tell how how what the what the condition is without actually having it in hand. Uh, from a video is very difficult. From a picture, even like really good pictures, it's a little bit difficult to to see every single flaw uh, or blemish on the card outside of like if there's whitening or something like that. But just holding it around in a video, uh, hard to tell exactly what it looks like. Again, he might have been looking at graded copies. Maybe he was looking at like an eight or something like that that sold. Uh, if he was, if he's talking near mint, maybe he's talking three sixty for like a PSA seven near mint. I hard to say, hard to say exactly. Uh, but yeah, don't slide stuff around on the camera, or on the on the camera, on the counter. And then also the the fact that he was doing like the light test instead of checking like rosette pattern. Uh, light test is more common in Magic the Gathering. Maybe he's more familiar with that. Uh, it's weird that he said that it was real right away, and then he kind of was hesitant to say it was 100% real. Um, as a card shop, as somebody that's you know buying and selling stuff, you need to be able to know that stuff. You need If you have it in hand and you can't tell if it's real or not, uh, you should be checking the edges to make sure that it's not uh, it hasn't been colored. Uh, essentially, if there's whitening and somebody tries to recolor, um, y you can use a black light as well to make sure that there's nothing going on there in terms of recoloring and stuff like that. Uh, all the stuff that you should have on hand um, that you should know how to do and, and that you shouldn't have to bring it to a game store in order to tell that but at least now he can be fairly certain that uh, that he's got the real deal whether or not it's worth the money that he paid is debatable I think I think it was decent I think it was decent if we're talking today's market value uh, decent deal for him probably a better deal for the seller 
But again, like to not know and to be driving around and meet with somebody, you could be wasting your time. You could get something fake and then also drive over to the card store um, to get their opinion. There's a lot of steps here uh, that could have been could have been avoided. Uh, and uh, again, that's a, it's a, that's quite the quite the hustle, quite the amount of effort and and uh, work for something that you could have been could have been scammed on, essentially. So know what you're doing beforehand. If it's a, an important amount of money to you, uh, if it's $300, if it's $3,000, whatever it is, know what you're looking at, know what you're doing, um, and know the conditions to a certain extent so that you can compare uh, dollar values. Um, like if he's got to ask like if it was a good deal or not, that's, uh, again, it's, it's, it's 300 bucks. So it's not like life changing, uh, regardless of how uh, financially well off uh, this person was, but like when you get into if it was a whole binder of this stuff, uh, if it was if you just 10x multiplier this stuff, it can it can definitely ruin someone's day. We don't want to see any of that. We don't want to encourage scams of any kind. Uh, and again, it's just it's man. I thought uh, I thought there was probably a, a decent chance just based on their initial conversation, uh, where we have kind of the this the seller pretending to know things but not knowing other things or pretending to not know other things. The whole thing, the, the transaction itself was was sketchy, and um, there's no way uh, without, at least I guess with the game store's opinion, that I would have thought that, like, I, I would not have bet money on this being a uh, a legitimate transaction. We'll, we'll just put it that way. But thanks for, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully this was useful to some people that are watching this, some people that are newer to buying and selling Pokemon cards. Uh, and hopefully it was at least somewhat entertaining and maybe maybe a little little tidbit, maybe a little little informational uh, for the people that have more experience. But uh, I thought there was a, a, a good change of pace and a good video to put out. Hopefully it helps somebody out there. I'm sure it will. It always does. There's always... Uh, oh, and if it does help you, if it did help you, if it avoids you, if it helps you avoid getting scammed or if it helps you make better purchases, uh, then do let me know. I do like hearing that, especially if you would like to join the Discord and I punch it all into in the general chat. Uh, join the Discord. See you guys next time. Have a good one. Look out for each other out there. Bye.